took a closet in the back of the house and I put shelves in it and that's my wife's pantry and she gathers from here and yonder and sales and her mother and she has stacks of this and that in there. Wouldn't it be nice if we could go to the second shelf on the left and find a jar of holiness or a, a can of uh, forgiveness? Learning to live, first of all, a person has to say, what do I need to do to get my mind right and live right with God? Now, I know Acts 2.38, and we'll touch upon that, no doubt, but let me tell you this. First of all, before you can ever start growing, you've got to kill some other stuff. You can go into where they got some kind of a, a moss on the wall or some kind of a, a thing that's got pores that's coming out, and if you don't clean that thing and get rid of that and then seal it off, you're just, you're just kidding yourself if you go in there and wipe it off. You still can get from that death coming through. People have got to forgive. Forgive. I don't care if your neighbor stole your best cat. Personally, I'd give him a reward, but... You know, that's all right. If you cat lovers, I don't want to walk on your cat tail or nothing. You got to forgive people. If you're walking around and you still remember your uncle said a bad word to you when you are seven years old... There's something wrong with your mind. It's addled. You need to get rid of that and get it out of there. You need to dig it out. You need to pluck it out and keep it out. You need to get rid of your hate for any and everything. I don't care how you've been treated by who and where. You get rid of it and forgive and you will be a healthier person. Forgive the government. Forgive the policeman. Forgive the judge. Forgive also your family. One of the most important things that I think I try to teach in the church is this. Would you please, would you please treat your family as good as you do strangers? Huh? There's people that will do anything for a stranger and turn around and talk like a dog to somebody in the family. Friend, treat your family as good as you would a stranger at least. Amen. Amen. Forgive yourself. You got to forgive yourself. So you made mistakes. All of us have. We make mistakes. We're weak. People are not strong. We might think we're strong. We're not strong. He said all of us in our best, at our grandest, if all of us to the top of all that we got, we're like filthy rags compared to God's righteousness. And so we, we're weak and we make mistakes. But forgive yourself. Forgive other people. And this one I, I, I believe that you have to do. And some folks say, that, well, they don't it's not how you can even say that. But forgive God. Forgive him for the times that you said, I don't see how God can be God and allow this. I don't see how God can be God and let this happen. Forgive him. If you think you've got ought against him or he's got ought against you. God ain't wrong. God ain't wrong if he kills me and I fall off these steps. He ain't wrong. God is right. If you put it in your mind, etch it in there, mark it down, and put it in there so that you don't never remove it. Don't ever take it out. That God is good for you. God will do you right. God will stand by you. God will be there in the midnight hour. God will be there when your world falls apart. He'll be there when the doctor don't know what to do. Listen, God will be there. Let God be in your life. Forgive him of anything if you think you have to. Forgive your family. Forgive society. Forgive yourself. And then you got something to start with. And now you can start all over. These little children around here, they're innocent and they're so sweet. And how come we think they're so nice? You know, when old people get like them little children, they're nice too. You can feel the same way about them. Some folks remember somebody did them wrong way back yonder and don't never want to ever forget it. A man that is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, and evil surmisings. 
If the Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 5, there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, what is there to argue about? Why not just let it be the word of God and let it be one Lord, one faith, and one baptism? Some of you asked me, he said, well, I think one of my grandsons, I don't see him very often, asked me, he said, was uh, John the Baptist a Methodist? I said, what? He said, was John the Baptist, was he a Methodist? Somebody told him that John the Baptist was a Methodist. I said, son, you're old enough to read. You get in there and you look and see. They was disciples. They was followers of Christ. They was a Apostles, but I don't see in there whether it said there's any Presbyterians or Baptists or any other domination. The nominational uh, name is not going to save you. You're going to get saved when you obey the Word of God, huh? If there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, you better get in that one Lord. You better get in that one faith. You better get in that one baptism. I'll guarantee you what taught across this puppet is taught in California. You can go to Hawaii, they teach it in Cali- uh, in Hawaii, they teach it in California, they'll teach it in Florida. This is the word of God. This is not Marion, Indiana or Jonesboro, Indiana doctrine. This is the doctrine of Christ. You stand up and be holy. Don't take palm readings. Don't look under the astrology signs. Exodus 22 and 18 said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. A lot of witches today. A lot of witchcraft. A few years ago, witchcraft books outsold the Bible for the first time in history. The young people are turning towards witchcraft. One of the reasons they don't see any strength or power in the church. That's why the soul-saving stations that you find like this is so valuable. There's still some. There's still some that wants to live holy. There's still some that wants to live right. There's still places you can go and be taught that sin is sin. You need to stop it. You need to live free from it. You get free from that, I'm going to tell you something. When you went down in a baptismal tank, How many here has been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? When you went down in that tank, was you sincere? You bet you was. And when you come up, did you feel good? Woo, hallelujah. Been a long time for this old man. But I felt good when I come out of there. You know why? Over here I had a 40-pound sack of lies. Over here I had a 50-pound sack of deceit. Back there, I had 150 pounds of hate. Huh? Had all that stuff. It just weighed down. Just, just couldn't hardly go on at all. Mm-hmm. And went down in there and got rid of all of that. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I felt like I didn't weigh very much. Yeah. I just felt like I could walk on. But if you're not careful, after a while, you'll go back. And you'll slide back the old ways and if you're not careful you'll pick up old habits and you'll live like you live before you come to God instead of all things becoming new when you come to God all things should become new the joy the peace people say well what do you get out of going to church so much said y'all must be the meanest people in the world you got to go to church all the time no we don't got to We get 